To make any binding for a quilt, the first thing you need to do is measure the perimeter of your entire quilt. In this case, we set our laptop case measure 19 and 3 quarters in length and 14 and a half in width. The same thing is going to be doubled up on this side and the same applies for the width here, which means I'm going to have 19 and 3 quarters times 2, which I have here is 39 and a half inches, that accounts for this side and this side, and then 14 and a half times 2 for this and here is going to give me 29 inches. When I add both of those sums up, I get 68 and a half inches, which means the entire perimeter of this entire rectangle is 68 and a half inches. To that number, you then want to go ahead and add 10 inches, okay? And the total you finally end up with is 78 and a half inches. That's how long I need to make my binding strip. My binding strips, I like to cut them at two and one quarter inch in width. Now in length, we said we needed 78 and a half inches. I don't have fabric that's that length long. So what I need to do is to combine shorter strips until I get the length that I need. So what you're going to do when you're adding or combining two strips together is to lay one facing up and vertically like this. Then the other strip that I'm going to attach to it, I want to put it pretty side down, okay? And it's basically going to make a backwards L. So first you lay it pretty side up and then you match the bottom corner with this pretty side down coming from the left side just like this. Now you're going to pin that in place and you're going to stitch from the top right corner to the bottom left corner. And what that's going to do is once this is stitched in place and you fold that back like this, you see here, you're going to end up with one continuous piece. I've attached my strips, now you just want to trim away this excess about half of an inch away and do it to all the other meeting parts that you made here. Now press those seams open and press in place like that. Now I like to double check my work and make sure, just lay my binding just like this to make sure I have enough to go around the entire perimeter just like that and then have some left over so that's good. If you notice that you don't have enough here this is where you need to attach more fabric to add to your binding strip. Now we have to prep our binding strip. To do that, you're going to make ugly sides of the fabric touching, which means that the pretty side is on the outside there, okay? So fold the ugly sides together and fold this in half to match those raw edges. And you're going to press that fold in place. Just go the entire length of your strip and continue to do that. To attach the binding, decide where along the quilt do you want to start and end. In this case, I'm just wanting it to be somewhere here along the side. The way you're going to pin this binding down is these raw edges need to match up with these raw edges. So I'm going to put it here. Now I'm going to leave about six inches without having it pinned down, okay, because I'm not going to touch that yet. And then just pin this in place like that, matching the raw edges. I'm only going to go down to this corner and I'm going to stitch this down to show you what we do. You don't want to pin this all the way around. Just stop right there and now go to the sewing machine. To attach my binding, I've left about the six inches, remember that where we started pinning it, I've left those six inches untouched and I'm going to start here around where I've placed my first pin. You want to go a quarter of an inch from the edge and that's where you're going to stitch. You're going to do that all the way to the bottom except you're going to stop. I'll show you where. One quarter inch away from this bottom edge. So do you see where this is here? I want to stop about a quarter of an inch up. And what I'm then going to do, I'm about there now, is I'm going to stitch at an angle and just swipe off to the right, okay? Let's see if you can see this on camera. So you see, I came down a quarter of an inch and then I stopped and just stitched off to the side to the corner of where my batting is. So here's my quilt, how it came off the machine and I stitched there. Now I need to continue bringing the binding down that way. So what I'm going to do is turn my quilt to the side, flip my binding strip up until I come up with this 45 degree angle here, hold it there with my finger and bring it right back down, creating a fold 
that needs to be flush with my quilt. You see how that's there? I'll do it again. It came off my machine as I was stitching straight like this. I'm going to turn it, flip my binding strip up to create a 45 degree angle, hold it with my thumb there, bring this down, and create a fold that's flush with my quilt. Now I want to pin this in place, and you can put a couple pins going down further here. Now what you're going to do is you're going to start stitching all the way from the top and back tack here. Make sure you take a few back stitches when you start here or else when you flip your binding around the corners of your quilt it's going to come apart. Start here, take a few back stitches and keep going down a quarter of an inch all the way down and repeat what we did on this corner to all other corners. We've stitched on our entire binding strip and now all we have to do is attach the ending and the beginning of the binding strip itself. So to do that, remember we've left about a five to six inch gap here. I like to take this, and this is the pretty side that's out here, okay? And we want to make these two pieces that are left over touch with pretty sides touching. So, just like that. And now I want to see where I can make both of these meet so that it's nice and flush with the quilt without puckering it up like that or lifting up the quilt. So keep everything nice and flat, pretty sides touching. In other words, the fold line right there where we pressed earlier. Just like that. See where they touch and where it comes flat with the quilt? And put a pin. The pin that I have there is marking this spot. Now what you want to do is pick up your quilt. And if you want, just hold it there in place and put it under your machine. And you know that you'll have to stitch a straight line right there. Or you can take a pen or a chalk marker or something and make a straight line for you to follow. Make sure that your fabric is flat on top and underneath so you don't grab any puckers. Put it close to the pin there and just stitch a straight line all the way down. So this is what it looks like where I've stitched. I'm going to go ahead and cut some of this excess. And now if I straighten out my quilt, you see what happens. It falls into place nice and neatly. So you just want to press this down. Now you want to take it back to your machine and continue stitching here to close this up one quarter inch from the edge. Our binding is completely attached now. Next step is to press this the opposite way, just like this. And continue to do that all the way around. Now with these mitered corners, I'll show you quickly what's going to happen. When we put this to the back side, you're going to overlap one over the other. And then you're going to end up with a perfect mitered corner, just like that. On the back side of our quilt, we need to fold over our binding and attach it down. There's dozens of different techniques of how you can do this. What I'm going to do today is the lazy version, and it's using something that they sell called seam a seam. This comes in different widths. In this case, I'm using the quarter inch because that's the space that I have here. And it's just a fusible tape, basically. So I'll show you how I do it. I'm going to break off a piece. I'm going to lay it down here. I kind of just press down with my finger take off the paper backing and you see there's a little thing of the fusible, the adhesive part that's there. Now I'm going to fold this over and as the name suggests, steam a seam, you're going to hold this down and use some steam on an iron to hold it down. So just press that in place for a few seconds and you see it holds it down. I wouldn't suggest this for any garments or for an actual quilt that you'll be using because through washing and drying the adhesive is going to end up um, the heat is what activates it. So if you put it in the dryer and after a lot of washes, it's going to come apart. But for something like this, it's going to be a laptop cover and I'm rarely going to wash it. We can go ahead and do this. But you can, usually what I do for my actual quilts is to hand stitch this down. So you also have that option. So I'll just continue to do that the entire length of the rest of your binding. 